Let's get it started, guys. Let's get it started. So I'm just going to set up. Today is obviously going to be the first lesson of hopefully 20, 24 different lessons in this phrasal verb course. So I'm just going to set up. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Um, give it a share if you've got time because it helps boost the video and it helps um, share the love a little bit. So yeah, make sure you give me a like and a thumb, uh, a heart, a thumbs up and a heart if you can hear me. The audio is all good, I hope, guys. Um, just going to quickly put a few links into the caption for this episode. Where are you guys listening from today? Are you all in Australia? Are you overseas? Are you in Lebanon? Are you in Turkey, France? Whereabouts are you guys today? Where are you watching from? As I just quickly try and load up this page. Alrighty then. How have you guys been too? Have you had a good week? I hope it hasn't been too stressful. I hope you guys have been laying back, chilling out, having fun with friends and family, not working too hard. Come on, internet, you can do it. Um, all right, here we go. So just let me post a link into the video feed here. And then we can get started, guys. Hopefully, mute that. Hopefully, you guys are pumped and ready to learn some phrasal verbs. All righty, all right, registered. All right, let's go. All right, so welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Hopefully, the majority of you who are keen to learn phrasal verbs are already here. I know that quite a few of you are going to arrive later. You might be watching this after it's already been up. It doesn't matter if you saw this live or not, guys. You're going to get a lot out of today's lesson. It's going to be an introduction to phrasal verbs, but first, obviously, I want to introduce the course. So, I've created or I've decided to create this phrasal verb course to help you guys. Um, why am I making this course? So, phrasal verbs are, are easily the most common thing that you guys tell me is what you're struggling with. You keep telling me it's the biggest thing in English that is a pain in the butt, that is really annoying for you guys to learn. And so, Wanting to help you guys, wanting to design courses, I came up with the idea of trying to create, firstly, a phrasal verb course and one that I could stream on Facebook that would have a free and live streamed component for you guys, but then also a paid component to help me support myself to do what I do and keep, obviously, creating great content for you guys. So. Um, I guess to talk a little bit about what's out there, phrasal verbs I know are really annoying, they're really frustrating, a lot of the time they seem counterintuitive, they seem to not make sense and from what I've seen out there, a lot of the videos on YouTube and a lot of the courses available don't seem to do the job very well with regards to teaching you phrasal verbs. They seem to give you a list and they just teach you, you know, here are all the phrasal verbs using the verb to come or using the verb to go. And I feel like that's not a very effective way of teaching you guys phrasal verbs. There's a quicker way, a much quicker way. So it's not just teaching the context of verbs and then the particles after the verbs, it's teaching the concepts, not just the context behind why we use the particles with the verbs. So that's why I think my course is going to be different. I'm going to be focusing heavily on the individual particles like on and off and out and in and talking about understanding the concepts behind why those particles are used with certain verbs. So you can understand more the cognitive linguistics. So what's going on in my head, what I'm thinking about when I use certain phrasal verbs because Quite honestly, I think most of the phrasal verbs that I use, I use spontaneously and I'm actually creating them when I talk. To go out, to go in, to go off, to go under, all of those things, I'm just making it up. I'm putting a particle and a verb together like that out of nowhere. I don't just memorize lists of phrasal verbs and then look for them. I pick a verb, 
and I pick the particle that I want to use and I combine them. So that's why I think this course is going to be incredibly useful for you guys because it's going to use understanding the concepts to help you use them like I do, like a native. So the basic overview of the course is going to be this initial introduction lesson and then we're going to have maybe 16 lessons going through individual particles. So out, on, off, I'm going to do a, list, uh, a lesson completely devoted to those individual um, particles. I'm going to go over the concepts behind those particles. Some of them have multiple sort of ideas behind why we use them, so different movements. And then I'm also going to go over exceptions, the irregular or non-literal phrasal verbs, and also maybe some expressions at the end of each episode that utilize that use these different uh, phrasal verbs with the particles um, that'll be in each one. After those lessons as well, I might do some comparative lessons where we can compare on versus off or in versus out or to versus away. So I really want to teach it in the context of those two different ideas. Quite often we have opposites, out versus in, on versus off etc. So that's the basic outlay guys. It's going to be about 22, maybe 24 lessons. I'm going to probably do two per week. At the moment I'm thinking Monday night at 7 p.m. and Thursday night at 7 p.m. I want this to go for about three months and the price is going to be $4.50 for each lesson, for all the bonus content for each lesson. They're going to be streamed live and free. So this video and all the audio you will get for free. But if you want all of the other stuff that I'm going to create for this course, it'll be $4.50 a lesson. So it'll be a one-time payment of $97. That's going to be the early bird price. And if you hang around to the end, you're going to hear about a deal that I've got, a special offer for the first 10 people to sign up. After the course is created, it's going to be more expensive. So this is for people who sign up as I'm creating the course and we can work together to um, develop this course because I want to do it with you guys. I want you to give me feedback and tell me how I'm going and what you like, what you don't like. So that's why it's going to be cheaper when you sign up today or in the coming weeks. If you sign up at any point, you'll get access to everything that you've missed that you may not have watched online. But yeah. After the course is complete, it's going to be $5 a lesson, which is $110. So what is the course going to comprise? There's going to be two lessons weekly, and these are going to be sprinkled with, sprinkled with um, Aussie slang, Aussie expressions. I'm going to try and utilize different kinds of grammar in there too. I might use different tenses. And so you'll be learning more than just phrasal verbs. That's the idea. I want to hit two birds with one stone, kill two birds with one stone and teach you Aussie slang expressions, grammar, all that stuff whilst focusing on phrasal verbs. So as I said, every lesson is going to be streamed live guys. This component is going to be free. I'll put it on YouTube. I'll put it on the podcast. That's all free. I want as many people to be able to access this as possible. But for those of you who want to sign up and pay for all the bonus content, there's going to be this video overlaid, put on top of, so I'll probably take it and put it down the bottom of a slideshow that has pictures, it has arrows, it has all of the annotations showing what these phrasal verbs are doing. And it also has example sentences that'll go with every single phrasal verb. So it's going to be a slideshow with this video down the bottom. You'll also have an MP3 with the full transcript of every word that I say in the entire lesson. So I'll have that written out like a normal podcast episode. And then you will get every single phrasal verb that I use while I'm talking, not just the examples that I give, I'm going to define at the end of each lesson and I'm going to give example sentences at the end of each lesson. Um, aside from that, I'm going to create a Facebook group with daily exercises for everyone in this course. They'll be written exercises where you can answer questions and we can discuss things as well. You can ask me questions at any time and then I'm going to also have daily video challenges 
where you have to try and use the phrasal verbs that we went over in the last lesson. Okay, so that's it guys, that's the basic um, overview. Let's get into the first lesson. I might just have a drink first before I lose my voice. So today's is going to be an introduction to phrasal verbs. What are we going to learn today? We're going to learn what a phrasal verb is. I'm sure most of you know that already, but we'll go through that again. We're going to overview the different particles that are used. We're going to go through the different kinds of phrasal verbs, uh, transitive, intransitive, separable, inseparable, literal and non-literal phrasal verbs. We're going to have a bit of a discussion about how to learn these phrasal verbs, which we sort of already have done, how to practice them as well. And then at the end, it's going to be open to a Q&A session, so a question and answer session at the end, guys, where you can ask me anything and everything regarding this lesson, and then phrasal verbs, whatever you want, you can ask me questions. So let's get started. So what is a phrasal verb? A phrasal verb is a multi-word verb, right? We all know that. It's got multiple words in it, and they build together to make a verb, a single verb. So some examples are to hurry up, to turn something off, to look something up, to look up to something, uh, to stay away from something. So they consist of a verb and one or more particles. So up, off, up to, away from that I just used there. Often these things can be referred to as adverbs, prepositions or particles. This isn't really important guys and I don't want you to get bogged down in the grammar, okay? So I'm just going to refer to them as particles for the, the sake of this entire course, okay? Particles, so the verb and then one or more particles. That's a phrasal verb. So the different particles that you're likely to come across are up, down, on, off, in, out, around, about, back, for, um, to, at, away, with, by, and from. I'm sure that every single one of you watching now will know all of those words. So that's the best news, that's the good news, but we're going to learn how to better use those words. Particles can be opposites as well, they can have opposites, you can have up versus down, um, you can have on versus off, in versus out, and two versus away. So learning these in context is going to help a lot of the time because you'll know that if you can turn something on and you know the opposite of that is off, you know you can now turn it off. So learning those is going to be really helpful. Why are phrasal verbs so powerful and so worth learning, especially the concepts behind them? You don't have to learn much, guys. Definitions, yes, you have to sort of get an idea with those non-literal phrasal verbs. You have to learn the definitions and how to use those. But I would say the large majority of phrasal verbs are literal. They're the ones that make sense, right? So to go down, to go up, to walk over, to walk across. So you only need to actually learn about 16 different particle words, the ones we just mentioned, and then maybe 50 to 100 verbs, which you will already know. I'm sure that you will already have the majority of the common phrasal verb verbs in your head already. And you can now make thousands upon thousands of verbs, right? So that's why it's so powerful. You don't have to memorize a list of a thousand different verbs, of 2,000 different verbs. You just have to learn maybe 66 to 116 words and you can combine them in different ways to create all these different phrasal verbs. So what are the different types of phrasal verbs that we have? Type 1 intransitive phrasal verbs. I'm going to use some of this uh, grammar terminology, but don't let it scare you. Intransitive. So think trans as in to transfer, to go from me to you, to transfer. If it's intransitive, it doesn't transfer, okay? It doesn't go from me to you or to something else. So if a verb is type 1, an intransitive verb, that means that it acts on the subject. So for example, I woke up, I woke up. There's no object, there's no direct object, no indirect object, just the subject, me, doing something. So it's working on me, it's intransitive. 
I wake up, I woke up. Type 2 is transitive separable. This means that it's transferable, so it's transitive, it goes from me to you or me to something else. The verb, I do the verb and it acts on something else and it can be separated where you can take the verb and one or more particle and place the object in the middle, in the middle, okay? So, for example, I can turn the intransitive verb, I woke up, I can make that transitive by saying, I woke dad up, or I woke up dad. And you'll notice there that I separated it. I said, I woke dad up. So you can separate those. Type three are transitive verbs that are inseparable with one particle. So, I looked after dad. I can't say, I looked dad after. It doesn't make sense. I looked after dad. Maybe he was sick. Maybe he was unwell and I looked after him. I looked after dad. Type four is just like type three, except it has multiple particles. So, type four is transitive. It's inseparable. You can't separate it. And it has multiple particles though this time. An example is, I looked up to dad. I looked up to dad. So, I admired him. I looked up to dad. You can't say, I looked dad up to or I looked up dad to. That doesn't make any sense at all. It has to be, I looked up to and then the object. I looked up to him. I looked up to her. I looked up to myself. I looked up to dad. So, they're the four different types. And we're going to go over those again and again and again in this course. You'll learn them. Don't worry if you don't understand straight away. It'll come with time, but we need to cover this nonetheless. So, how do you know when a phrasal verb is intransitive, transitive, when it's separable or inseparable? Unfortunately, there's no simple rule to look at a phrasal verb and just know this straight away, guys. Um, you're just going to have to learn many examples and use them when speaking, especially practice using them. But you're going to get a feel for this really quickly and that's what this course is designed to do, to give you constant exposure for the three months that we run. So, by the end of it, you're going to be able to use these just like a native and intuitively create phrasal verbs. So, there is a shortcut and that is what we're going to focus on and it's understanding the concepts that underlie the particles and what the particles mean and ignoring the verbs. So, the, this is especially in the case of literal phrasal verbs. So, let's go through each type of um, phrasal verb, guys. We'll go through type 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we'll go through some examples. So, type 1, remember intransitive. This works on the subject. I'm the subject. I woke up, remember that example? I did it. The verb came back, it's reflexive, it's intransitive, it worked on me. So, the verb acts on the subject. Some examples, I woke up. It's just me that did it. I woke up. He walked off. So, he walked away, he walked off, he walked off. It's just something he did. He walked off. The tree fell down. The tree standing here in the wind, the wind's really heavy and topples the tree over, the tree falls down. It's just something the tree does. It wasn't caused by something else. The tree fell down. The last example is the dog stood out. So the dog, he's running around and he's maybe he's pink. The dog's pink and he stands out. He stood out. He was incredibly obvious. He was very noticeable. The dog stood out. It's just something he did. It's intransitive. In each one of these cases, it's just what he did. Um, all right. So, type two, transitive separable. Transitive verbs take an object. So, type two ones take an object or they don't make any sense. You can't just say these on their own, right? So, I put down my daughter. I picked her up and I put her down. I can't just say I put down. I put down my daughter. I cut down those trees. So, there's trees and I chopped away at them and they all fell down. I cut them down. I called off the party. I cancelled it. I cancelled the party. I called off the party. So, it's something I did to the party. I called off the party. I stood up my date, and this is to kind of 
pretend to be going out on a date and then not show up, then I've stood up my date, okay? So these are transitive and they're separable. Transitive because it's something that the subject did to something else, okay? So as with those intransitive verbs that we went over, or at least some of them, we can actually convert those into transitive verbs by putting an object into the sentence, right? So I can, I woke up, um, but I could wake up my daughter. I woke up is intransitive, I did it, or I woke someone up, I woke up my daughter, I did it to someone else, it becomes transitive. I cleaned up, I cleaned up the house. I sat down, I sat down my son. So that's like, I've got a son, I've got a child, and I got him to sit down. I sat him down, I sat down my son. I spread out, oh, I spread out, just like this, but I could spread out my clothing. I could put my clothing out, I could spread my clothing out. So this is how we're transferring from transitive, oh sorry, intransitive to transitive and vice versa, right? So you'll get a feel for that intuitively as we go through. So let's talk about those ones that are transitive type two now though, the separable ones, guys, and let's practice separating these. So if I put down my daughter, how can I separate this verb? I put down my daughter, what would I say if I separate this phrasal verb? I put my daughter down. If I cut down those trees, I cut down those trees, how do I separate that one? How do I separate the verb and the particle? I cut those trees down. I cut down those trees, I cut those trees down. I called off the party, I called off the party. I canceled the party, I called off the party. How do I separate that one? I called the party off. I called the party off, I called off the party. You'll get a sense for this as we go. I stood up my date, I stood up my date becomes I stood my date up. I stood up my date, I stood my date up. And so now let's see what happens when we change these objects though in these sentences, these same sentences into pronouns. So with type two transitive verbs, with the verbs that separate, if the object is a pronoun like him, her, them, or it, it has to go in the middle of the phrasal verb. You can't put it at the end. It just sounds weird, okay? So I put down my daughter, I put down my daughter becomes I put her down. You can't say I put down her. That sounds strange. I cut down those trees becomes I cut those trees down, which also becomes if I use a pronoun, I cut them down. You can't say I cut down them. Okay, so remember separable phrasal verbs, if they can be separated, if you use a pronoun, it has to go in the middle. Okay. I called off the party becomes I called it off. And I stood up my date becomes I stood him up or I stood her up. Okay, so that's the end of the type two ones. So type two transitive separable verbs. So I guess even though I've said here guys that they don't make sense if you put the pronoun at the end, the thing to remember is that people will still understand. So don't be afraid of making mistakes. In fact, I encourage you to go out there and purposefully make mistakes because this is when you're gonna learn. People will ask you to clarify what you meant and they're gonna learn, you're gonna learn, you're gonna remember from those moments. So go out there and make as many mistakes as possible, guys, and don't be too afraid of, of making errors. So type three, transitive and inseparable. These are the ones that we can't separate can't separate them. So if you do separate them, they just don't make grammatical sense and they sound a little strange. Even with pronouns, the pronoun this time goes on the end. Okay, so some examples. I looked after my girlfriend. She got sick and I looked after my girlfriend. If I turn my girlfriend into a pronoun, her, I have to say, I looked after her. I looked after my girlfriend, I looked after her. I can't say I looked her after. That doesn't make sense. I got over his jokes, so I don't like them anymore. I don't really like his jokes anymore. I got over his jokes. If I wanna say them instead of his jokes, I would say 
I got over them. I got over his jokes. I got over them. So you can't say, remember, I got them over. Doesn't make sense. I came across this book. I came across it in the library. I found it. I came across this book. If I want to say it instead of this book, I have to say, I came across it. I came across it. And I can't say, I came it across. Sounds weird. The last example here is, I picked on my brother. So I teased him. I was nasty to my brother. I picked on my brother. If I want to say him instead of my brother, I have to say, I picked on him. I picked on him. You can't say, I picked him on. Okay, doesn't make sense. So type four, type four transitive verbs again, you're doing it to something else or the subject is acting on the object. These are inseparable as well. Type four transitive inseparable phrasal verbs. The only difference between these and type three is that there's multiple, so two or more particles after the verb. So let's go through some examples. I put up with my dad. So I tolerate my dad, I put up with him. I put up with my dad. If I wanna say him instead of my dad, what have I gotta do? I leave the pronoun at the end, which is gonna be him, and I say, I put up with him. I look forward to the party. I looked forward to the party. If I wanna turn the party into it, I look forward to the party, I look forward to it. So I anticipate it excitedly, I can't wait. I look forward to the party, I look forward to it. I got back at those people. So I got revenge on, I was avenged, um, I got back at those people, I retaliated to those people or at those people, I got back at them. So yeah, we just said it there. I got back at those people becomes I got back at them. So again, we can't separate it. Them goes at the end. I got back at them. The last example here is that I ran out of food. I ran out of food. I opened the fridge. There was no food left in the fridge. It was empty. I ran out of food. I ran out of food. If we want to turn food into the pronoun it, what do we have to say, guys? I ran out of it. Do you have any food left in the fridge or have you run out of it? Yeah, it looks like I've run out of it. What a bummer. So, transitive type four verbs, these inseparable ones, guys. Basically, anytime you notice that there are multiple articles, I think, I have a feeling that these are going to be inseparable, okay? So, if it's with someone, if it's to someone, if it's at someone, if it's of something, if it's from something, if you've got a phrasal verb and then you have with, to, at, of, from, after the phrasal verb, after that initial verb and the other particles, I have a feeling, I'm not 100% sure, but I have a feeling that is going to tell you don't separate it. So, something to keep, keep an eye on, be aware of, that's a potential rule. I, I just noticed that earlier today and I was thinking that might be a good hint. But if you find some exceptions, Show me, prove me wrong, and we can discuss them. All right, so those are the four types of phrasal verbs. Intransitive, transitive separable, transitive separable with one particle, and transitive, sorry, trans, transitive inseparable with one particle, and transitive inseparable with multiple particles. But hopefully you saw the patterns there, guys, and how they're kind of working. Now let's get into literal versus non-literal phrasal verbs, and I've got some examples here for you, okay? So quite often we can combine the verb with the particle and it makes literal sense. So for example, I look up would be me doing this. I'm looking up as opposed to looking down, looking across or looking over. I'm looking up, okay? That's, that's literally what I'm doing. Looking and the direction is up, okay? So that's the literal meaning of to look up, to look upwards, to look above yourself, to look up. So he, lo he looked up and he saw a plane, okay? He saw a plane in the sky. That's type one, it's just something he did. He looked up. Um, however, we can have the irregular or the non-literal version of this phrasal verb to look something up or to look up something. And you'll notice there that it's a, tra it's a type two transitive phrasal verb. I can separate it to look up something, to look something up. And this one, 
just means to look for information. So he looked up the word in the dictionary, he looked the word up in the dictionary, or he looked it up in the dictionary, okay? So that's the first one. To look up literally is like to look upwards, or to look up figuratively is to find a dictionary, to look up a word, it's to search for information. The second example is to hang up. So imagine that I am, I guess, um, calling someone on uh, the phone and I end the phone call. And that would be the non-literal one, right? And the interesting thing with this, so if I, I have the phone here and then I hang up, I press cancel. I'm over the call, I've finished, I don't want to talk to that person, I hang up. The interesting thing here with that one, it's non-literal now, but back in the day, 10, 20, 30 years ago, when we had a phone, we used to have to hang it up on the wall when we were done, right? There was a receiver. You put the phone on the receiver to cancel the call. So that was literally hanging up. And you'll see here now though that hanging up, is no, it no longer uses that literal action. And so the phrasal verb has kept being used but for a non-literal sense now, okay? So you could hang up, you can just do it, hang up, intransitive, that's a type one, I just hung up. Um, You could hang up the phone, so that's a type two, where I've done it to something, I hung the phone up, I've hung up the phone. Um, And you could also do a type four, I've hung up on someone. So now there's multiple particles in there and it's something I've done to someone else or on someone else, I've hung up on my dad. I've hung up on someone and I can't separate it. We also have the literal sense of to hang up, which would be like having a coat and hanging it on the wall. See behind me here, these coats, I hung them up on the wall. I hung the coats up on the wall. I hung up the coats on the wall. So that's the literal meaning of this phrasal verb, but you you can see what's happening there, right? There's phrasal verbs that have literal meanings, have non-literal meanings, and sometimes the non-literal meaning that's used today originally came from a literal meaning, like in to hang the phone up on the wall, but nowadays it makes no sense, but we still say to hang up. So the last example here, guys, before we get into a, a comparison between transitive and intransitive, The last example is to get on, okay? So, to get on can mean to enter any kind of public transport. I get on a bus, I get on a train, I get on a plane, okay? So, to get on, to get on. We can use this as a type three phrasal verb where I got on the plane, so you can't separate it. I got the plane on, can't do that. It has to be I got on and then the plane. I got on the plane. Or you could have it as a type one. Did you get on the plane? Yeah, I got on. So, I got on. Yeah, I just, I just did it. I got on. I got on. Okay, so that's the literal example there for to get on. But we also have the non-literal example to get on with someone or just to get on well. Okay, and this means to have a friendly relationship with one or more people. So, we got, we got on well at the party. So this would just be an intransitive example. We got on well, it's something that we did and we got on well at the party. That's where we got on well, it was at the party. So that's a type one. However, I can turn it into a type four, a transitive phrasal verb where I'm doing it to someone else if I say, I get on with him. I get on with him, okay? And again, you notice the with is there And so, that's a sign that it's not separable. I get on with someone. It'd be weird to ever hear someone say, I get him with or, you know, get on him with. None of that. I get on with him. Okay. So, let's go through a few more slides, guys, and then we'll finish up with a and a So, I hope you've got your questions for me about phrasal verbs. Um, and anything out of today's lesson. Okay, so I've got some examples here, intransitive versus transitive again, just to sort of hammer this home so that you understand the difference between intransitive and transitive. An example could be me falling over, okay? I tripped over. I tripped over. That's intransitive. It's just something I did. Whereas if there was a turtle on the ground, so like a turtle, one of those reptiles that swims, um, the turtle could trip over. So that's intransitive again. He just falls over. 
or the turtle could trip the man over or he could trip me over. And so that, that again is an example of turning an intransitive verb into a transitive verb. The turtle tripped over the man. The turtle tripped over the man. We can turn this, we can separate it. We can turn it into a separable phrasal verb. The turtle tripped the man over, tripped the man over. And if we use the pronoun him, remember it has to go between the phrasal, the verb and the particle. It has to go within the phrasal verb. So the turtle tripped him over. And the interesting thing here that I wanted to get to is that if we say the turtle tripped over him, so this is where it's important, okay? The turtle tripped over him, I've put him at the end there instead of in between the verb and the particle. Now it's changed the meaning. Do you get it? The turtle tripped over him. Now it sounds like the turtle tripped over, fell over, did this, over this man, as opposed to the turtle caused this man to trip, to trip over. And so that's why it's important to get used to where these pronouns are placed because it can change the meaning. The turtle tripped me over, the turtle caused me to trip. If the turtle tripped over me, that would be me lying down. The turtle was walking along and then tripped himself over me, okay? So that's why moving that um, pronoun there can actually make quite a big difference in the meaning of these phrasal verbs. Another example is move over. So I move over, I do this, I move over. I shift, I move over, I shift sideways. And we can turn that from an intransitive verb, I shift over, I move over, into an, a transitive verb, I moved over the man or I moved the man over. Okay, so I'm, I think you guys are getting the point here. So a few more examples here. I guess I had some more thorough ones to kind of, one last thorough one to go through to give you a real idea of how moving the pronoun really changes the meaning of these phrasal verbs, okay? And then we'll go through a summary of today's lesson and then we'll finish up. So the phrasal verb to, to get through something, okay? You imagine you've got a tunnel and you're going from one side through to the other side. You wanna get through the tunnel, okay? So you've got the tunnel and you want to get through the tunnel to get through. That's the sort of literal meaning of to get through. Um, I got him through. That's example number one here. I got him through. This one is I snuck him through, okay? It's I got him from one side through something to the other side. So that's what it's, it means when it's separated like that. I got him through something. I got him through. If we change this and, and say I got through him, now that's the idea of I and him. I'm here, he's standing in front of me, and I went through him. So I went from one side to the other side by going through him. So we've changed, all we've changed there is moved him to the other side of through, and it's completely changed the meaning of this phrasal verb. I got him through, so I got him, I got him through. Whereas if I say I got through him, all of a sudden it feels like I'm talking about myself. I got through and he was in front of me and I got through him, I got through. If we change this into a type four now and we say I got, I got through to him, so we've just inserted one extra little word to, I got through to him, that's to reach someone. So I tried calling him on the phone. I tried to get through to him. I tried to get through to him. Did I get through? I did, I got through. And again, you'll see that I got through him. I got through him, that's to go through him. I got through him. I can say, I did, I got through. The same with I got through to him. I can reply simply by saying, yes, I got through. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense, guys. Again, just go over this lesson, listen, absorb it and it'll slowly come together. You're not meant to remember everything, okay? So let's go over a summary, guys, quickly. Let's summarize the four types of phrasal verbs. Type one is the intransitive kind. You do it to yourself. I woke up. It's just something I did. There was no object. It's just the subject doing something. I woke up. That's intransitive. Type two is transitive, and this is the separable type, right? So I woke up. Dad, this time I'm doing something to someone else. 
I woke up dad and in this case I can separate it I woke dad up and what do we do with these transitive separable phrasal verbs when it's a pronoun guys what do we do we have to separate it I woke him up can't be I woke up him that sounds weird though we would understand what you meant but it should be I woke him up Type three is the transitive verbs that are inseparable with one particle. I looked after dad. I looked after him. I looked after my dad. I looked after him. We can't separate it. And transitive type four are the inseparable transitive verbs that have multiple particles, so more than one particle. I looked up to dad. I looked up to him. I looked up to my dad. I looked up to him. And remember, we can't split we can't separate those phrasal verbs. So let's summarize that all, guys. Phrasal verbs can be literal, they can be non-literal, they have both those meanings. Most of the time, you're going to hear um, literal ones, right? And these are the ones that you can just intuit and create off the top of your head, off the top of your head, intuitively, you can just naturally do this once you learn those 16 or so different particles and maybe 50 or so verbs, all those really common verbs, guys, we combine these together and then all of a sudden we can make thousands of these verbs. So that's why it's so good. However, there are non-literal ones that you just kind of have to learn and just start using and this course is going to be designed to help you practice literal ones and the non-literal phrasal verbs, guys. Again, the particle the particle, the bit that goes with the verb, is actually probably the most important part of phrasal verbs, especially in the case of literal phrasal verbs, like to go over, to go up, to go down. The particle is what's going to tell you what's happening. It's going to give away the meaning. It's going to make it obvious, okay, especially with those literal ones. So phrasal verbs can be one of those four types, remember, it depends on context and they can change their meaning depending on where you put pronouns. So again, that's why it's gonna be important for us to go over those, to work together in this course, to use the Facebook group to chat about them and to go through different scenarios and just, yeah, do all these exercises. So again, bit of a discussion here, guys. Focus on understanding these concepts behind the particles. Don't try and memorize lists and lists and lists of phrasal verbs. Try memorizing the 16 particles and the 50 to 100 verbs, but I'm sure you probably already know these guys, to be honest, because they're the most common words. They're the most common words, so don't worry. You, you, you've got this already, okay? It's in the bag, it's in the bag. Um, think about the cognitive linguistic side of things, so what you're thinking of in your head, that's the concept, right, but between or the different, the different particles, like up is this basic movement, down is this basic movement. When we understand that, we know that when we combine it with a verb, we know what we're doing with um, the verb just changing how that movement is happening. So that's why the concepts are so important. So we're gonna also learn um, context of a lot of these things with examples. So that's really important. When you're trying to learn phrasal verbs, find as many examples as you can. And this is especially important for non-literal phrasal verbs. Non-literal ones are the ones that don't make obvious sense, they don't make literal sense, you just have to learn them, but learn them through context with multiple examples. Um, use them in writing, use them in speaking whenever possible. Don't shy away, don't shy away from using them, as in don't avoid it. Don't shy away from using phrasal verbs, go out of your way to, to use them. Make mistakes, guys, too. Make as many mistakes as possible, because that is when it's gonna be a big sign that you have learnt a ton, okay? If you go home and you think, crap, I made 30 mistakes, that's 30 mistakes closer to being able to use it like a native, to being able to use them confidently and naturally. So, basically, you need to go through this course one time and just expose yourself to it all, learn it all, absorb it, and then I would go through a second time and really focus on the stuff that you find difficult, okay? That's gonna be the basic idea. So again, just to go through what this course offers, guys, when you sign up to the course, we're gonna focus on the concepts that underlie each particle, first and foremost. 
you're going to get the streamed video combined with the slideshow that I can see here in front of me with pictures, with example sentences, with diagrams showing you how these phrasal verbs are acting. So the visual side of things is very important. It's really good if you can see and hear at the same time. You're going to get an MP3, so what I'm saying here, with a full transcript of every word that I've said in this lesson. So you can watch it uh, as a video or you can listen to it as an MP3 or you can read it as a transcript. I'm going to go through and highlight every single phrasal verb that I use, not just as examples, but in the course itself, in every episode, I want to go through and make sure you guys have access to all of that. Define every phrasal verb that I use because I've tried to use a heap. And I'll give you example sentences as well. And so we're going to build this as we go each week. We're going to build it through time. There's also going to be the Facebook group, guys. So you're going to have access to daily exercises in the Facebook group. You're going to be able to ask questions at any time and you're going to be able to practice with others, okay? So the good news for you guys before we get into the Q&A, the Q&A, you stayed this whole lesson. The first 10 people to sign up via the link that I've put in the description there, the first 10 people to sign up using the coupon code 50 bucks. So I'll write that to you now on Facebook, guys. 50 bucks, one all capitals, all capitals, gets you the course for 50 bucks. So you save almost half, okay? So hopefully you can see it in the comment right there, right now. 50 bucks with the number one, all capitals. If you go to the link that's in this, you can get it for just $50. It's a one-time payment, that's it, okay? After the 10 people sign up, it'll be $97, okay? So this is just to say thanks to you guys and to hopefully have a few of you who can help me in the very initial stages getting this up and running. So that's it, guys. Let's get into some Q&A stuff. Do you have any questions at all? I know I just saw Rocio say something. She loved the class. Quick question, will you still be releasing expression episodes during this course? I will. I'm going to have a lot of work to do. But the basic aim is going to be to have the expression episodes coming out on a Sunday. I'm going to try and do one of these live classes on a Monday night at 7 p.m., just like these Thursday ones. And then on Thursday, I'll aim to make that one as well another one of these phrasal verb classes, guys. So there's going to be two classes a week and I'm still going to do the expression episodes on a Sunday. So hopefully from the income that I can generate from this course, as I'm building it with you guys, hopefully that can free me up completely to just work on this 100% of the time. That's the basic idea for me. I want to be able to just keep teaching you and keep giving you as much material as I can with the time that I have. Um, so, okay. Rajendra asks, what is the meaning of the phrasal verb to take up? So this can have many different meanings. Um, Rajendra, I hope I'm saying that correctly. But if you take something up, it can have the literal meaning of say, I pick up this case and I take it up somewhere, right? So I might go up some stairs to the next floor above me. I take this up to the next floor. So it goes up. If I'm upstairs and I want to come downstairs, I could take it down. Take it downstairs, take it upstairs, take it downstairs. But it has non-literal meanings, right? So like I guess to take up a sport is to begin a sport, okay? If I take up soccer as a recreation or I take soccer up, it's to begin to do soccer. I'm going to start doing that. So a few years ago, I decided to take up teaching English. I decided to take teaching English up, right? So that's the sort of more, I guess, non-literal version of this phrasal verb to take up. And I guess it probably has some kind of, I mean, it feels like it has some kind of literal meaning where I imagine picking the thing up and now it being a part of me because I've taken it up, right? So if I take up a sport, it's now a part of me. I've taken it up kind of metaphorically, not literally, but that's, that's where I think that has probably originated from. That's the feeling that I have in my head when I say, yeah, I've decided to take up um, soccer, 
it's like I've, I've decided to make that a part of my life, like I've picked it up, taken it up, okay? So hopefully that helps with that question, mate. I can't see the link in the coupon. All right, let me just share the link straight away for you guys then in the thing, okay? There you go, that link. If you click that link that I just shared, guys, and I'll put it in the thing as well, it should take you straight there and you don't have to enter the coupon. So again, for the first 10 people, it'll only be $50 for this course. Everything after that is, after the first 10 is going to be 90 Seven. So just let me enter this into the description as well. So hopefully that works. Let me know that that works for you guys, okay? Let me know if that link works. Let me know, Rocio. PTE classes. What is PTE classes? Ah, oh, as in the um, English ones. Not yet, not yet, okay. So active guy wants to know, what's the difference between to help and to help out? Um, to help someone is just to do something for that person, to make their life easier, right? So I might carry my, um, my grandmother's shopping across the road and that is helping my grandmother, right? To help out, at least, without looking it up, has the sort of idea that I'm helping someone complete a task, okay? So imagine that my parents are trying to get dinner ready. I could help my parents prepare dinner, but I could help them out prepare dinner as well, preparing dinner as well, rather. So they're pretty much synonyms. You could use them interchangeably, but to help out doesn't really change the meaning, but it has the idea that someone's trying to get a task finished, they're trying to complete something, and they need help to do it, they need help to figure it out, they need help to finish it, and so if you help them out, you're helping them finish that task. So I hope that makes sense. The link doesn't work. God damn it. Must be because I'm um, signed in. Hold on one second. All right, let's see, let's see. What about, <laughs> I'll delete that one. I'll delete that one quickly. Squish him rub him out and I'll post another one. Give this one a go. Does that one work for you guys? Okay, I just posted another one. Sorry, I should have figured this out um, before the lesson, but I had actually only just set this up five minutes before I got started. So it seems to be working all right for me. I'm getting through. So is that the link works? All right, sweet, good to hear. Remember, it's 50 bucks with a one at the end. You can see it there at the end of the link. If you just go via that link to the um, website and enter that coupon, the first 10 people to sign up will get, get the course for 50 bucks. So any other questions, guys? What else have you asked, Active Guy? You've got quite a lot. When do you use the past participle after have and when to use the verb after have in causative verb? Can you give me an example? Did you write it down for me? I will have called, you would say, I will have called him back. Um, and I will have something. Ah, oh, no, no, no. See, you can't split those up, mate. They're not phrasal verbs. So you have to say, I will have called him back. So, oh, sorry, you can't split it in that way. You have to put him after call. You can't put it... Um, between the verb and the auxiliary and modal verbs. So this is where it gets a little complicated, okay? It has to go after the main verb. I will have called and then you back, him back. Um, and what was the other example there? We'll have scanned these papers and sent them to you, okay? So in that case, you have to say, I will have scanned and then these papers, that's where it goes. Uh, and send them to you. So in all of those examples that you've just used there, if you're gonna split it, if they are phrasal verbs or if they're not phrasal verbs, the object has to go after the main verb, which was, I will have called him back and I will have scanned these papers. You can't put the object before the main verb, okay? I hope that makes sense, okay. Are Australians superstitious? What are some superstitious beliefs in Australia? Ruchi, okay. 
So, I don't think so. I mean, there are people who are superstitious. Some people believe in ghosts. Um, I would argue that some people are religious and believe in God, which I would say is a form of superstition, although it's not that kind. It's not the same as believing in ghosts. But I don't think that there are many other sort of superstitious beliefs in Australia that are associated with being Australian, right? There would just be the odd person here and there who would have a superstitious belief. Like I have friends who have crystals and they believe that they will protect them from certain things. I'm not exactly sure what, but I know that they have those superstitious beliefs. I know that people will say knock on wood as in they don't want to jinx themselves, so they don't want to say something and then have something bad happen to them. And they'll say, oh, well, knock on wood. That's superstitious, but I don't think there's anything that's uniquely Australian that is uh, superstition. So I hope that helps. So it's just today. Yeah, that's it, Karina. It's a $50 just for the first 10 people who sign up, okay? So it's going to be $97 usually after the first 10 people sign up, but for the first 10 people who sign up with the coupon 50 bucks, one, the course, the entire thing is just one payment of 50 bucks. Okay. Oh, thanks, Rocio. Awesome. Any other questions for you guys? Do you have any other questions for me? Anything else that you'd like to know, whether it's phrasal verbs, whether it's stuff regarding English? You're welcome to ask me anything and everything and I'll try and answer it. Do you have any questions from um, today's episode? Do you want to know anything about transitive and intransitive verbs, separable and inseparable verbs, non-literal and literal phrasal verbs? Can you give me some examples? Can you, can you use some of the phrasal verbs that we went over today in a comment? And can you show me, are they intransitive? Are they transitive? Do we have some examples where you can separate it, where you can leave it unseparated? Can you comment some examples of phrasal verbs, guys? Let's have a bit of a play and see what you can come up with. So, what can I write? Okay, I woke up the dog becomes when separated. So, what can you give me with that? I want to know how to use the expression seebs. Ah, Kim, that's a good one. Okay, seebs. This is a really obscure um, expression. So, this comes from can't be fucked, okay? Which is a way of saying can't be bothered. So, if you say I can't be fucked, C, B, F, can't, be, and then fucked, it's a rude, informal way of saying I cannot be bothered, okay? So, can't be fucked is often made polite. You can make it polite by saying C, B, F as in the letters that each of those words begin with. I can't be fucked. I CBF. CBF. That's a politer way of swearing. It's like using the, the F word instead of saying the, the word fuck. I say the F word. It makes it politer, okay? People have then turned can't be fucked into CBF. Yeah, I, I CBF'd going to the beach today. I CBF'd going to work. I CBF doing whatever. I CBF, CBF. Um, they've turned that entire thing, CBF, into just CB, CBS, CBS, right? So they've, they, they've abbreviated an abbreviation. So they've taken, I can't be fucked, CBF, and then they've turned CBF into just CBS, CBS. I don't know what the spelling of that is. I guess it's like you wrote it. It's like C with a few E's and then a BS. But that's a common one that you might hear from the odd person in Australia. Every now and then might say, ah, Seebs, Seebs, can't be bothered. Can't be fucked, can't be bothered, CBF, Seebs. Okay, so I hope that helps. Any other questions here, guys? Any other questions? Can you, can you convert the sentence, I woke up the dog, Separate it. Can you separate that sentence for me, guys, that I've just typed out? We'll have a bit of a play. I'll give you some sentences to play with. Um, what about um, don't give the ending away? Um, combine. My pleasure, guys. My pleasure. Can you combine the, that sentence? So I'll write combine, I'll write separate, and I want you to play around with these phrasal verbs.
All right, I will have my mother give you money. Yes, you can definitely say that. But this time, when you say I will have someone do something, it's have that's the main verb there, I believe. I'll have my mother do something. I'll have her go somewhere. It's I'll get her to go somewhere. I'll have her go somewhere. And I will have these papers scanned. Okay, all right, sorry, I get that last sentence now. I will have these papers scanned and sent to you. That makes sense. That makes sense. So in that case, have is actually the main verb there, I would imagine, in these sentences. And that's why you can say, I'll have her give, I'll have her do. It just, it's, a, it's just a weird grammatical pattern, so it's not the norm. If you want to use the past participle, like I will have scanned these papers, then you have to put it afterwards. But yeah, sorry, that was why I was confused. And I can't see the rest of your comment there. What have you got on here? Um, in the first line, there is just the verb give after have, but in the second one, there's the past participle scanned. Okay, the reason that's happening is because I'll have these things and then done for you. So I will have these things finished. I will have these things completed for you. It's not, I will have completed these things for you. It's that I will have them. And then I guess the past participle there is actually acting like an adjective on the object, on the papers itself. I think, I think that's what's going on. But that's a pretty complicated question. <laughs> that's, you, you got me. So I'll have to um, go away and have a think about it. What about if I use the sentence, I What about that one? How can we turn dad into a pronoun? And where would the pronoun go, guys? I got dad out of it. I got dad out of it. So would you do anything strange there or would you just would you just leave the sentence as it is? with the pronoun in the place of dad. What would you do there? If we want to turn dad into him, where would him go in that sentence? Do we just leave it there, maybe? Or do we put it at the end? Do we put it between out and of? I got dad out of it. What do we do, guys? What do we do with it? Anything, anything interesting? Can you give me one there? I'll see if I can find some other phrasal verb examples. What about... Um, What about that one, guys? I got him out of it. That's exactly it, Rocio. Good one. Okay. What about I threw out the trash? I threw out the trash. Yes, Juliana got it as well. Good job. I got him out of it. What about if I throw out the trash? I throw the... I throw the... Uh, uh, trash. I throw the trash, do I? Or do I just leave it as I threw out the trash, guys? How would I convert that one? What can I do there? Especially if I want to use it. I threw out it or do I throw it out? Which one? How do I? Do I leave it separated or do I have it unseparated? What do you reckon? What do you reckon, guys? Yep, that's it. I threw the trash out. I threw out the trash. But if I turn trash into it, Rocio got it. I threw it out. Exactly, guys. Exactly. All right, let's see if I can find some harder ones for you. What about if I, I, hung, mm, I hung up the phone, okay? Can you convert that one into it? So I hung up the phone, I hung up the phone. Is it I hung it up or is it I hung up it, okay? And the same, it could be the same with I hung up my coat. Did I hang my coat up? Do I hang it up or do I hang up it? If you use the pronoun there. So I hung up the phone. That's it, exactly. Active guy got it. I hung it up. It's separable, separable. So these are probably too easy for you guys. Jeez, we're gonna have to put it on hard mode. All right, all right, all right. What about if I put up with my annoying father and I wanna say I put up with my annoying father, but this time, my annoying father, I want it to become him, okay? So I put up with my really annoying father, I put up with my father, I put up with my annoying father, 
I want to turn all of my annoying father into the phrasal verb, sorry, into the pronoun him. Where does him go in that sentence? And can we separate it? Or does it have to stay together with him at the end? What can we do there, guys? What can we do there? I want to see. What about that one? Okay, and I'll type out another one as you're answering that. I put up with him. Exactly. Rocio got this one right. Okay. For uh, my clothes. What about this one? I looked for my clothes and we want to turn it into them. Yes, yes, you guys are all getting these correct. Okay, what about... What about that one though? I looked for my clothes. I looked for my clothes and I want to turn my clothes into them, into them. So where would I do that? What, where would I put them in that sentence? I looked for my clothes. I looked for my clothes. Where would we put them? I looked for my clothes. Anyone having to think about it? I looked for them or I looked them for? I looked for them or I looked them for? Luce has nailed it. Luce has nailed it. I looked for them. Jenny got it as well. I looked for them. Okay, what about I got over his attitude? Okay, I got over his attitude and I want to say his attitude, I want to turn that into it instead of his attitude. So we're going to use the pronoun it. I got over his attitude, his really annoying attitude. I got over, I got over, or did I get it over? Juliana's nailed it. Juliana's nailed it. I got over it. So I get over something. And you'll get this feeling, guys, right? You'll get used to this feeling of, yeah, I'm getting over it. Like you'll, you'll be used to feeling those words need to go to... Um, together, okay? They need to go together. You'll get used to that feeling. I get over it. I get over it. I get over it. Meaning I'm I no longer care about it. I'm I have no I'm not fussed. I'm over it, okay? What about I picked on the dog? The dog I want you to turn into him. I picked on the dog. Why did you pick on the dog, man? You were teasing the dog? Teasing the dog? You picked on the dog? Why were you picking on the dog? Snap out of it's a good one. That's a good one, active guy. Okay, we'll do that one afterwards. Okay, so can you convert that sentence though? I picked on the dog. I picked on... Juliana did it again. She got it. She got it. Picked on it. Yeah, picked on him. Yeah, that's it, Ruchi, you got it right too. If we were talking about picking him up, then we could separate it. But this time we were saying picking on, okay? So the other one that active guy was saying, I snapped out of it, right? So if I snap out of something, it's kind of like I'm in a trance. I'm la, 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 off in the world and I snap out of it and I'm back, okay? So wait, one question quickly, Ratio. Why the dog is him and not it? You can use both. You can say you can say it if you don't know the gender, right? But you would you just wouldn't do that with a person, but with an animal you can definitely do it. I picked on it, the dog, that dog. But if the dog was yours and known to you and you knew if it was a male or a female, then you would tend to use him or her. So this is my dog. I've had him for several years. I've had her for several years. She's this old, he's this old. We would use gendered pronouns if we know the dog well. Um, we might even just guess. We might even just say, how old is your dog? How old is he? And then the person might just say, uh, it's a girl. But yeah, we use gendered pronouns for pets. Um, the example I was going to say, I snapped out of it, okay? I snapped out of it. So that is, I believe, a type for transitive verb. I snapped out of it. So I came out of a trance, snapped out of it. But what if I cause him to come out of the trance, right? So how would I put that sentence together? Using to snap out of, um, out of it. And I want to say that I caused him to come out of the trance. How would I use the phrasal verb to snap out of it? where it's me causing him to come out of his trance. 
How would you put him into that sentence? Can you guys, can you guys give me a sentence that will fit with that one before we uh, finish up? I'm starting to lose my voice. I might have to have a drink. So this time it's you're causing someone else to snap out of it. So this time we're going to get the verb to act on someone else. So I snap him. And then you would say out of it. That's it. It's got to be out of it, unfortunately, with this one. Rosio got it right. I snapped him out of it. I snapped him out of his troubles. That's a good one. Active guy. Oh, it looks like Aussie English got it as well. I snapped him out of it. Nice one, Aussie English. Good job, mate. Good job. <laughs> anyway, yep. Jenny got it as well. And Zuli, you guys are killing it. You guys are killing it. All right, guys. Well, we might finish up there. I might just share the link uh, one more time with you guys. Hopefully, I don't screw this up again and I use the correct link. But I'm not sure how many people have signed up. But if you sign up today to this course, the phrasal verb course with all the goodies, the first 10 people to do so, it's just going to be 50 bucks instead of 100 bucks. Okay, so you'll save 50%. You can sign up down there. Um, give it a go and let's build this course together, guys. Let's create it together. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. I know it's going to be a lot of work as well, but it'll be two lessons a week. We'll be working on phrasal verbs, learning the concepts. And yeah, I hope to see you guys in class. Thank you so much for staying for the entire class. It was a long one. It was a long one. So it was about an hour and 10 minutes. You did well, guys. You did great. And I will chat to you soon. Thank you. See ya.